Oh man, you guys asked and asked and asked about the second most requested thing short of a dagger, and that would be a paper ballast song. Oh man, was not looking forward to this thing at all. And let me tell you why. This was the original ballast song that was made entirely out of paper. And the real part of this that I did not feel like, it was just a bad idea to try to teach this because these holes are a pain in the ass to actually punch out. Because I had to use a freaking hole puncher, like one of those hand squeeze the hole punchers. They're like a dollar at Walmart, but I went through four or five of them just making this one paper knife. So it's like, great, five bucks, you don't even get to keep the tools for a paper knife. I just could not justify that cost. This has its own load of issues. You're probably thinking, why, did, why make a paper one? Just get a real one. Hello? Some of us aren't fortunate enough to live in parts of the world where these are even legal to own. And then trying to buy a training knife, if they even sell them, you gotta go through your parents or your local store has you have to be, you have to be 18 old and older to buy one or whatever ridiculous legal hoops you've gotta jump through. But yeah, these things are fairly inexpensive. But the problem is not the price, it's getting your hands on them. Which is probably why a lot of you are asking me how to build one. Just in case you're wondering, this is the, I believe it was the hieroglyph. This cost me, I think, about 12 bucks on, uh, was it Blade Play? But holy crap, 12 bucks. And this is, you guys gotta see this to, to believe it. That's ridiculous. You build swords out of this type of steel. And for 12 bucks, you get a knife that is made entirely of 1040, of, here I go again with the 1045. <laughs> but yeah, sandwich construction, but there is no play in this at all. Now this is supposed to happen, so that's, that's to be expected. And just for reference, this is, uh, I believe it was called the Regal Flipper. It was like 10 bucks off of the same website. Yeah, not happening. This is 440C stainless. Very hard to sharpen, but keeps an edge pretty nice. So I held off that tutorial for a couple of years because I couldn't justify five bucks for tools that you may or may not be able to keep or use after the fact. So how am I gonna justify this? Don't know what this is already. This is a Dremel tool. This cost me 25 bucks. Sure, it's an off-brand, but you know, it gets the job done. So for the price of a Dremel tool, you can pick up the two knives I just showed you. How do you justify that? So the way we're gonna do this, is still the usual 110 pound paper method. Actually, with that being said, I wanna I want know why people are asking, you know, oh, can I do that with this yada yada paper? I was like, oh, what's, can I do this out of thinner paper? I was like, no, just, it's, you know, anything over 67 pounds, fine. But, you know, if I say 110 pound, just do 110 pound. I, I don't get, how is it so difficult for some people to follow instructions? I keep on that tangent. I'm just, I'm just gonna end up turning this build log into a, into a rant. But yeah, the print I had, um, it's a little bit bigger than what a real ballot song would be. Actually, whoops, punch the camera. Actually, there's no definitive size on a real ballot song either, so it's, it's just that they're just bigger than what I currently have on hand. And uh, I actually drew that before I actually owned any real steel ballot songs. 
All right, so I'm just gonna make two of these. Actually, you'll need four of these. I just I just have a bunch of uh, this stuff left over from the previous project I was doing. It was like a paper box, which it's, it's kind of strange considering that my channel is primarily just swords and what have you not. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm gonna release one. I'm gonna make a paper box. It's gonna boggle your mind. But yeah, I'm starting to run out of ideas when it comes to swords, because it's like every sword is just the same thing over and over again. Long sword, long sword, long sword, fancier long sword, long sword with with a skeleton on it. It's just I don't know. Short of teaching concept, it's just what do you call it? I don't call it clickbait, but it gets really tedious after a while that and I have no place to put them. Still having that storage issue. A lot of my stories I actually put into another closet in that room over there. It's like a tiny little room. Completely inaccessible. Well, not completely inaccessible. It's just not easily accessible because I have this uh, what's it called? shelf thing while I'm sitting in front of because I gotta move the shelf and then jump in there grab whatever I was looking for. So yeah, take a break on swords. Uh, go do some smaller projects. Just because they're faster to churn out. Actually, I've got two of these things. This is from the last project, that paper box project. I think doing one four layer should be fine. Because there's no supports going on this thing, so the paper has to hold itself up, so being really thick is one way to do that, but that presents the other problem of being able to punch the holes through. Uh, before anybody says, oh, why don't you just punch the holes in individual sheets and then stack them? Uh, you can do that, it's just that you'll get accumulated tolerance. So... The first hole might be spot on, the second hole might be slightly off, and by the time you're, you know, four layers in, it's it's completely off center. And you gotta do that to what? Effectively four, eight yeah, like twelve layers of paper. You gotta ensure that every single one of those holes are lined up because this has to pivot freely. So why not, instead of punching 12 holes, you punch three. Two for the handles and one on the blade and you just line that up easily. It's just a popsicle stick I'm doing that with. I used to do it with my hands, but it's like just wearing away at my fingers. It gets a little uncomfortable. That's not gonna work. Actually, that doesn't matter. I'm not going to be able to use this entire sheet anyways. Now, the last one I did... Let me shove this under a book first. So the last one I did, I had the oh-so-genius idea of doing everything out of the same thickness of paper. That is including the blade, and more importantly, the spacer that went under the back of this thing to create that channel. That spacer and this blade is actually the same thickness. So what happens is that, if I have this in storage and try to flick it out, just holding it is enough, bends the paper enough that you're, you're binding the blade. So you can't drop it out without, you know, really lightly holding it. And next thing you know, you, this whole thing goes flying out of your hands. So that was just bad foresight on my part. And the way I'm going to solve that is just simply by making that sep that spacer piece by adding one more layer to that when I glue it together. Alright, so I have everything 
or most of everything cut out. These are going to be the two handles. I'm going to crap that into that later, and then the blade. And that's the hole that I drilled out using the Dremel tool. Actually, notice I've actually swapped cameras again because I couldn't be bothered to take this camera off its tripod and uh, shoot this close up for this vlog. Actually, this thing actually includes some close up for the tutorial, so I'm just pretty much shooting two videos at once and then just pick and choosing what footages I need. Let me show you how this thing works. So, here's that Dremel head. Probably not the best idea to do this in the middle of the night, but yeah. Okay, so with that being all cut out, it actually leaves some feathered edges. Gonna use uh, this little block to uh, sand off some of these. All right, so have all the holes and everything drilled. Actually, I gotta find where I put that blade now. I'll worry about it later. So, so what this is, is actually the pieces for the spacers, I guess. For the back side of this, as you can probably see, the center piece here. That pretty much gives us our space to create that channel we need for the blade to actually fit in. Now again, what I did with this one was I made the spacer the same thickness as the blade, so holding on to it, you get it into a bind. That is not very conducive for flipping. So what I did with this here is I cut it out of the same thickness, uh, that same piece of uh, hardened paper that I made the rest of the blade out of, except this time I glued it to another sheet this single layer of hardened paper and that's going to give us our clearance we need to allow this thing to freely uh, pivot just so when we're holding on to it it doesn't end up pinching the blade now I gotta find where I put that blade oh, found it so I ended up drilling four holes for this and uh, I realized after the fact that this center hole here was not needed I actually modeled this thing off of uh, Hello, drop everything off of this particular one. And you see this one has a, um, a center pin, but this one has enough tolerance in it that I don't need it. So I'm gonna delete that hole off of the master print and hopefully uh, do something about that hole in the middle. Oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. So this is the safe handle. Anybody see what's wrong with it? No? Yeah. Never a project without a hitch, huh? So earlier I had a sanding drum fly off of its mount. Luckily this is just a round thing, so that wasn't too horribly bad. Caught that before it actually completely went AWOL, but this is a sanding, this is a, no, wrong, this is a cutting disc. If this flies off, I am like all manners of screwed. Okay, so with this, these are some of these brass fasteners. And what I'm gonna do is uh, cut these little, whatever these are called, the little prongs off of them. This is a, uh, I forget what this tool is called, but ended up buying it for when I was uh, doing, it was like gun plus. It was just one project, ended up buying like an entire set of tools for. This is what I had left over, and they clip brass really nice. 
real nicely. So, clip those off, keep these heads, and uh, that is pretty much what I'm going to use to cover, I guess, these little pins and just hot glue into place and that will be the permanent solution to keeping these pins in place and my hot glue is ready hmm. so just fill that proceed to burn myself picking it up That's that. Now time to attach everything else. This, I thought I had this thing figured out, but I guess not. Let me get this zoomed in and focused. Yeah, I'm trying to use this camera in manual mode, but I guess it's not working. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Those are two little spacers that I cut from popsicle sticks because what I thought that I had dried out these um, sheets of paper long enough that they wouldn't warp on me when I was working on them clearly did not dry out thoroughly even after sitting underneath the books for about four days. So what had happened is that these channels, they started drying and curling inwards ever so slightly, enough that the blade actually started binding on it, so I could not flip this thing. So what I ended up having to do was, uh, actually I was very lucky that whatever I did, the popsicle sticks I had just sitting around, I just cut little sections out of them, hot glued those two pieces together, and uh, if I can find where the depth of field of the thing is set at, that'd be great and simply made a little uh, piece like this and just shoved it into the back side of this yeah that sounds funny shoved it to where the uh, latch gate would normally be and uh, I hadn't glued these things down into place yet but you know, it doesn't have to be popsicle sticks it could be hardened paper but I didn't feel like measuring out uh, however much I needed this to actually be so I just kind of eyeballed it, winged it, and uh, some way, somehow it worked. Yeah, now I just got to get this in position and then glue it down. Same thing with the other one. Now, on the bite handle, you may run into issues with the length of this pin. So you might have to pull that pin out and uh, cut a new pin for it if the uh, piece you're putting in there is actually wide enough to undo the glue. But yeah, this is what the latch gate does. If I, if I can get this thing close enough to where it's supposed to be. Yeah, I think I might have to cut a new pin for this one too. But yeah. Besides being a spacer to uh, widen the channel, now as you can see, there's a little bit more space in there for this thing to move around now, but it keeps the latch from falling into the way of the blade. On a paper one, this really doesn't matter, but on a real one, this saves this portion of your, of your knife. Let me show you uh, my steel one and what had happened to that. So here I am, looking all over the place, Turns out it was my pocket, but yeah, let me zoom this in. The, don't know if you can see that, but right about here. Yeah, I don't think that's showing up on camera, but what had happened was that 
the latch on this thing before I put this little rubber band on there as a kind of like a makeshift latch gate would fall right in the way of the blade and sometimes on closure you get metal to metal contact and that will destroy any blade regardless of how hard that steel is it's just not good for your knife so that's the purpose of what a latch gate is supposed to do and uh, this build log has uh, gone on for quite a while as is a paper balance on definitely not something you'd want to uh, keep to uh, practice flipping because this doesn't flip very well aside from some very simple openers it's a good alternative to uh, something like this if you're you know legally you can't get one of these depending on where you live or your parents won't let you have one whatever your reason may be but this project has been pretty difficult to justify buying you know a $25 tool for when some of the cheapest trainers you can get out there are like you know five ten dollars so this is just one of those projects for me you know replicate out of paper just because I can